Hey there everybody, Sage Popham here, founder of the School of Evolutionary Herbalism, and welcome to this week's episode here on the channel. And uh, got a really great question this week about the spectrum of preparing plants into medicines. You know, we look at different cultures and traditions across the world of herbal medicine from traditional cultures to modern science, and there is a whole bunch of different ways that plants are prepared into medicines from as simple as picking it and eating it to uh, super critical CO2 extractions to spagyrics to just making a simple cup of tea. There's a lot of different ways we can get medicinal plants into our bodies and uh, I think there's there's a lot of questions in the air sometimes of you know are they all effective are some better than others how do people do it traditionally? Are these fancy new modern ways of extracting plants any better than just making an infusion or decoction? So that's what I'm talking about in this week's post. Thanks so much for joining me in, the, in this one. Be sure to take that second and hit the like, hit the subscribe button. It really does uh, help the channel out and helps us to continue to provide a bunch of free content for you once a week. So thanks so much for joining me here in this video and I hope you enjoy learning about this uh, variety of medicine preparations. All right, question number two from Kelly Lockamy in the Vital Cerebral Practitioner Program. And Kelly is asking, oops, where'd it go? There we go, okay. And Kelly is asking, uh, I follow Dr. Cheryl Tilgener's methodology of tincturing herbs according to her book, Herbal Medicine from the Heart of the Earth. The percentages are very precise for achieving the recommended strength. I'm wondering if herbalists of old, the eclectics and old physicians, had 95% alcohol to work with, and do we have any way of knowing their extraction methodology? I imagine the alchemists were, very, were more precise than the village herbalists, or the indigenous peoples who may have been simply extracting with wine. Do we know how Native Americans prepared their herbal medicines? I wonder if Sage might give a podcast about the history of how herbs have been prepared by our predecessors sometime in the near future. Yeah, that's a really great question, Kelly. Um, and I thank you for asking it. So there's a lot of layers to this question here. So I'm just gonna break down the layers, answer it to the best of my capacity. Um, so, um, so first of all, yes, modern herbalism, we do see a very, very specific and very precise, um, you know, methods of extraction from, you know, just fine tuning what percentage alcohol is being used to extract those plants into a tincture to, you know, all the way on up to, you know, in the phyto, what I kind of think of as the phyto pharmaceutical industry, right, where you've got all this super fancy scientific equipment that's being used to, you know, isolate single constituents or spectrums of constituents and, you know, CO2 extractions and crazy ways of making all these capsules and tablets and powders and concentrates and, you know, blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, so, you know, the process of making herbal medicine has definitely changed a lot, um, for sure. I think for um, most of us, um, just kind of home herbalists that aren't, you know, running big corporations or whatever, or, you know, big companies, um, most of us are just, yeah, using tinctures, using teas, using um, infusions and decoctions and infused oils and and things like that, um, which is totally fine. So when it comes to kind of looking backwards though, um, you're kind of asking about the eclectics, uh, the older herbalists, uh, did they have 95% alcohol? Absolutely, right? The alchemists have been distilling 95% alcohol for a very long time and 95% alcohol was not um, you know, a rare thing then, right? It was, um, you know, definitely time consuming <laughs> to make it, but, um, just through distilling things over and over and over again, right? Until you have that very high strength, pure alcohol. Um, you know, what we see around the, um, time of the physiomedicalists and the eclectics was kind of the beginnings of, uh, new, there was a shift happening in herbal medicine preparation at that time 
where we're, you know, the, it's like the advent of chemistry was kind of happening, right? And so there was one particular man, John Uri Lloyd, um, and he was creating these very um, different forms of extracts, right? That they, so, so the eclectics kind of latched onto this concept of specific medicine, um, specific medication. Um, this was a concept developed by the physician John Scudder. And Scudder, you know, the eclectic school of herbal medicine was kind of falling apart. <laughs> um, and um, the, they weren't really doing so great until John Scudder came along and kind of saved the school, which I believe was in Cincinnati, Ohio. And um, this concept of specific indications and specific medicine was really kind of one of the um, the identities that um, the eclectic movement of medicine became wrapped around. And a part of that was the ver like the specific medicines, the way of preparing the medicines, which was developed by John Uri Lloyd. And so there were very particular ways that he was extracting the plants, distilling the plants, isolating certain things from the plants, obviously not to the degree that <laughs> is possible today, um, but he was making not your standard forms of herbal medicines. And I don't really, I would love to know what he was doing. I don't know what Lloyd was doing. I don't know if there were patents on that or if those processes were kept secret. I haven't really looked into it. I would, I would like to though, because I think it would be a very interesting um, area to explore from a historical perspective. But for me as a medicine maker and a practicing spagyricist, and I just love the process of lab works and such. I think it would be very interesting to see what John Uri Lloyd was doing and how he was preparing his plants. But they were definitely um, quite precise in the way that they were making their herbal medicines. Um, and they absolutely did have 95% alcohol to work with. Um, the alchemists, you're saying, I imagine the alchemists were more precise than the village herbalist or the indigenous people's who may have been simply extracting with wine. So yeah, I mean, in generally, in general, um, and then you kind of kind of going on to say, you know, do we know how Native Americans prepared their herbal medicines? So you know, basically, all cultures have their unique approach to herbal medicine. Um, they have their they have their ways, right? And. <clears throat> Um, but what we do see are absolutely some universal approaches to how herbal medicines are prepared, regardless of culture and place and time, right? Um, of course, the simplest way is pick it and eat it, right? So there's the, the, the boundary between herb and food and where there are those, those remedies that are um, edible as well. So you're getting the nutritional component as well as the medicinal component all at once. Granted, remedies in that category generally aren't the super strong medicines, right? Because they're foods too. They're not having uh, as strong an effect as strictly like medicinal, medicinal plants, like the really potent, they're only medicinal, right? Of course, water is the universal menstruum. And so what we do see is that across the board, everywhere, people put herbs in water, right? Um, whether that's cold water, whether that's boiling the herb, whether that's boiling the water and pouring it over the herb, water is the universal menstruum for extracting plants. And I don't care who or where you are in the world, um, water, you know, people make tea, right? People make infusions, people make decoctions. The three primary ways that I have seen, or maybe four primary ways that I've seen water used to extract plants, again, is, what in Western herbalism we refer to as the infusion, which is where you boil water, turn, turn the heat off, you have your plants and you pour boiling water over the plants and let it steep for a period of time and then drink it. Number two is the decoction where you put the herbs in the pot of water, bring it up to a gentle simmer and actively simmer the herbs in the water um, for a period of time and drink that. Um, generally speaking, infusions and decoctions are used for different parts of plants. The general rule of thumb is that infusions are prepared with 
lightweight aerial parts of the plants, leaves, flowers, um, or very aromatic um, plants. So even some roots and seeds will be infused simply because they're very, have a lot of volatile oils that if you boil them, you're kind of cooking off a lot of those compounds. And then the decoctions are for tougher plant parts, right? The woods, the um, tough barks, tough roots, things like the really, like especially like dried berries too, you know, a lot of those really dried like elderberries or hawthorn berries or schizandra berries, things like that um, are decocted. Third would be um, probably a less, less used approach, um, but this is something that I have directly witnessed amongst um, indigenous people, traditional herbal healers in their culture, um, both in North and South America, which is where they would grind a medicinal plant up, a fresh medicinal plant up in a mortar and pestle to a paste. And sometimes they would add small amounts of water to that and then squeeze it really, really hard to kind of extract the juice of the plant. So we could, that could be kind of seen as like the old school method of juicing it. And, um, I've seen people grind those herbs up, grind, 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 and then squeeze out, you know, up to an ounce of that juice and take that as the medicine. So that's another way water is used. And then fourth is you mentioned fermentation of wine. Um, this is something that we see done more in, and I don't know, obviously I haven't studied every single indigenous culture across the world and how they work with plants, but, um, what we do see is that herbal wines were definitely used in Chinese medicine, definitely used in Ayurvedic medicine, definitely used in alchemical medicine in, in the West. I don't, I can't speak for um, indigenous cultures and whether they're preparing herbal wines, but I mean, ultimately that is as simple as um, an herb put in water and allowed to sit and ferment um, for a period of time. Um, so, so there is that method as well. And then obviously in the alchemical tradition, they would take that herbal wine and, and distill it over and over and over again. So there's a much more, much more processing involved in that tradition. Um, you know, I think the other way that we see is a pretty, uh, you know, from you're asking specifically about how, um, indigenous people or first nations people, prepare their herbal medicines. You know, I think it's very simple for the most part. Um, one thing that I do know is that there are many, many cultures that um, they don't like um, plants being harvested and then um, kind of put into a bottle, right? Or stored in jars. Like, um, you know, uh, I definitely have been you know, kind of questioned of like, well, why are you putting these herbs in these jars? Like, you know, those plants, they don't like to be in jars. They want to be either growing in nature or they want to be, um, you know, may, you know, healing someone now, you know, kind of speaking to like harvesting herbs and then drying them and then storing them for, for later use. Right. Which is something that's absolutely done in Western herbalism. Right. A lot, you know, it's like, Oh, this herb is in flower. This is the time to pick it. So if we need it in the winter, we can use it. Um, but I do know that that is absolutely looked down upon by many, uh, cultures, um, whereby oftentimes, you know, a medicinal plant is only harvested when it is needed specifically for that a person, right? So someone comes to the healer and asks for help. They, they see what plants are needed to help that person. And then they go out and harvest those plants specifically for that person. Um, and one of the main reasons for that is because then the, the herbalist has an understanding of the person that those plants are going to be used for. And then when they're making their prayers and they're making their offerings and they're doing their harvesting, they're able to do all of that, holding that person in their mind and in their heart and in their prayer. And in that way, when they, when they gather those plants, there's this, this added potency, there's this added power to those plants because they're attending to that spiritual side as well. Um, and so those offerings are made in particular ways. 
Um, certain plants are harvested in certain ways at certain times that matches that person, you know, from my understanding of it, many traditional cultures, you know, whereas in the West, as from a botanist perspective, we see like, oh, this is St. John's wort and it's all Hypericum perforatum and that's all one species of plant. Well, uh, traditional people might look at one St. John's wort and, and see it as, as a very different kind of plant than the St. John's wort growing over there. Maybe this one's growing in a field. Maybe this one's growing up on a mountain. Maybe this one gets morning light. Maybe that one gets evening light. Um, there's a difference between those plants. So they, they, there's, there's ways that maybe their medicine making is what we might consider simpler than, you know, what an alchemist is doing where they're distilling and fermenting and s crystallizing and, right, they might look and be like, you're crazy, like, just eat the plant, it'll help you, you know? Um, but there, um, tr many traditional peoples are much more specific in, in other ways that we overlook. So, I, and, you know, who is, is one right and one wrong? I think they're all right. They're all right in their own way. Um, and I think it, it's just cultural differences and I think the, those things are okay. So, um, so those are some of the thoughts that I have when you're talking about medicine making and kind of different cultures and different perspectives, different traditions of preparing herbal medicines. And I think it's all about, you know, finding what works for you and what feels right for you. Also kind of how your, how your mind works, right? How your heart feels about the way your connection and relationship with the plants are and, and following that and following that guidance from the plant. So very good question, Kelly. Thanks so much for sending it over and uh, hopefully you enjoyed uh, and, and found the answer helpful. <laughs> so thank you.